morning. It's Tuesday, May 5th, 2020. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, May He Produce in You, and our scripture is Hebrews chapter 13. Now may the God of peace, who brought up from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, and ratified an eternal covenant with his blood, may he equip you with all you need for doing his will. May he produce in you, through the power of Jesus Christ, every good thing that is pleasing to him. All glory to him forever and ever. Amen. This certainly sounds familiar to me. It should. I heard this prayer a long time ago, and it was prayed over me by Ralph Brashears as I was ordained to the ministry of preaching God's good news. Mr. Brashears was a retired postmaster from Boone, North Carolina, and he was part of the church body to which I belonged. Every time I heard him pray, it impressed me that he was a man of deep faith. As a rookie in matter of ministries, I wanted that faith pathway. I wanted to have the kind of impact on others I saw in Ralph and those like him who were seriously following Christ. I knew that impact could only come from God's hand. But when you open your heart to God's leading, you look to others who have gone before to lead you in the pathway. God manifests himself in whatever way he decides, but often it's through mentors who've been there and walked through some fires. This prayer of the writer to the Hebrews invokes the blessing of God for whatever is needed to accomplish God's will. It reminds me of the saying that wherever God leads, God will empower you to accomplish whatever he wanted when he led you there. Accomplishing God's will, whatever it is, and whatever situation to which it's addressed, is always the prerogative of God's desiring. There's only one phrase I choose to describe this sense of choosing this pathway of being ready to follow God's will as a disciple of Jesus Christ. I call it the surrendered life. Everything about following God requires a humble heart that approaches, listens attentively, and then acts accordingly to what God has declared. I must admit that on 1981, on that day that I was ordained, I imagined ministry was going to be much different than it turned out. Much different. For you today, if you imagine serving God would mean living your best life, experiencing the kind of prosperity you hear about that could be compared to winning lotteries or the success stories of obstacles falling by the wayside like wilted weeds, perhaps it's time to reevaluate whether you're serving the almighty holy God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Peter, and John, or if it's been your desire to get what you wanted. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.